You know when you see your kids struggling in school? Like with reading and math. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's just amazing. So today we're going to look into something called spatial reasoning. And it might surprise you. Yeah. It's not just about art or building stuff. It's like having a map in your head. And that helps kids understand the world. So it helps them learn. It's actually super important, especially with like words and numbers and even stories. Okay, so what if my kid is struggling with fractions? Could that be spatial reasoning? It really could be. Imagine trying to understand fractions without picturing what a half or a third looks like. Mm, yeah. Spatial reasoning gives them that base to understand those math ideas. So they're missing that visual part. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just math. Think about reading, understanding the page, following lines, even words like above or below. All that uses spatial reasoning. I see the connection. But for parents who are hearing about this for the first time, what even is spatial reasoning? It's the ability to understand objects in space, like that mental map we talked mm. about. It helps us navigate, put together a puzzle, get around a new place, or even imagine moving furniture around. It's like an inner GPS. Yeah. But for more than directions. Exactly. And there's a cool study about London taxi drivers. They have to memorize tons of streets and landmarks to get their license. Wow. Researchers found that their hippocampi, the part of the brain for spatial memory, yeah. They were bigger than people who didn't drive taxis. Their brains actually changed because yeah. of learning all those spatial things. Yeah. The longer they drove, the bigger the hippocampi. It shows our brains can adapt based on what we do, especially with spatial skills. That's amazing. But how does this help our kids who are struggling in school? Think of it like this. When your kid does something that uses spatial thinking, it's like a brain workout. It makes those pathways stronger. So like building blocks, mm. puzzles board games, maybe. You got it. And the brain's ability to change like this, we call it neuroplasticity. It means we can actually help kids improve their spatial reasoning. Neuroplasticity. That's a big word, but it sounds hopeful. Sure. So we can train their brains to be better at this. Exactly. And the best part, there are a lot of fun ways to do it. Okay. I like where this is going. But you mentioned a connection between spatial reasoning and emotions earlier. How does that work? It might sound strange, but there is a link Remember the hippocampus? Uh-huh. Well, it's connected to the amygdala. That's the emotion center of the brain. Okay. So when you have strong spatial skills, that well-developed hippocampus can actually help regulate emotions. So it can calm them down hmm. when they're having big feelings. Exactly. A kid with good spatial skills might handle tough situations better, navigate new places, and even deal with stress and anxiety easier. Wow, that's really important. And this makes me think about something called proprioception. I've heard it's like our sixth sense. Does that fit into this? It totally does. Proprioception is knowing where your body is in space. It's really connected to spatial reasoning because it helps us understand where we are in the world around us. It's like when your kid is running or jumping or even just walking, they're using proprioception to move right, and all those experiences are feeding into their spatial understanding. So their body's like sending signals to their brain all the time about where they are. Exactly. And the more they can move and explore, the stronger those brain connections get. Okay, this is making sense. But yeah. I think some parents might be thinking, all right, how do I actually help my kid get better at this? Uh -huh. it seems kind of hard to grasp, you know? It's actually easier than you think, and the best part is these brain workouts can be really fun for kids and parents. Okay, I'm listening. Give me some examples. Well, let's start with something as basic as blocks. Have your child build towers or bridges or anything they can think of. It's all about moving things around in space and getting that picture in their head. Plain old blocks. Yeah. Who knew? Right. And puzzles, too. Jigsaw puzzles, 3D puzzles, even those brain teaser metal ones. They all challenge spatial thinking in different ways. I like that. And what about those kids who can't sit still? Got any ideas for them? Obstacle courses are great. You can set one up outside or even just move furniture around inside to make it fun. So we're turning regular stuff into learning. Exactly. And don't forget about playing outside, climbing trees, building forts, or even tag. All of that takes spatial awareness and coordination. Yeah, those are classics for a reason. What about something more like games? Board games are amazing for this. Think about chess. You have to plan ahead and see the moves in your mind or even something simpler like set, which helps with patterns and spatial organization. Hmm. Never thought about it that way. Mm. That makes sense. What about something creative like art? Oh, drawing and painting are great for spatial skills too. Encourage your kid to draw a map of their room or their dream house or even just abstract designs. I love that. It's creative and helps them think spatially. 
Now, what about this connection to emotional regulation? Are there things we can do for that specifically? Yes, and it comes back to that hippocampus and amygdala connection. Mm. When we help their spatial reasoning, we're also helping the hippocampus, which then calms the amygdala. So all these things we've talked about can help with both. Exactly. The key is to create an environment where your child feels safe to explore and make mistakes and try again. When they're not afraid to fail, they're more likely to take on those challenges and build resilience, both mentally and emotionally. It's like building that growth mindset. Right. But I think some parents might be a little overwhelmed by all this. Like, where do they even begin? You know, the most important thing is to just start. Choose one or two activities that your child is interested in and make them part of your routine. Keep it simple and fun. Exactly. You don't have to do it all at once. And remember, mm -hmm. you're not alone in this. There are so many resources out there for parents to help their kids with spatial development. Oh, like what? There are books, websites, even apps that have fun spatial activities for kids of all ages. And if you're really worried about your child, don't be afraid to talk to their teacher or a specialist. That's good advice. Yeah. It's all about finding the right support. Yeah. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to go back to that London taxi driver study for a minute. Yeah, it, it really made me think, especially that our brains can change that much from what we experience. It's a pretty incredible study. Remember how we were talking about spatial reasoning, like a mental map? Yeah. Well, imagine memorizing a whole city like London. That's what these taxi drivers do to get their license. It's a real test of their memory. Exactly. And researchers used MRI scans to look at their brains compared to people who didn't drive taxis. What did they see? They found that the hippocampus, the part that deals with spatial memory, it was way bigger in the taxi drivers. Huh? And the longer they'd been driving, the bigger it was. So all that learning literally changed their brains. Yep. And that's a big deal. It means even as adults, our brains can still change and grow, mm -hmm. especially in areas like spatial reasoning. So there's hope for our kids. Even if they're having a hard time right now, their brains can still get better. That's the point. The taxi driver study shows that we can use neuroplasticity to help kids develop these skills. So parents can be like brain coaches, giving them the right things to help their brains grow. That's a great way to put it. And the best part, this training doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun and engaging. Who doesn't love a good obstacle course? This is all making sense now. Spatial reasoning isn't just some idea. It affects how our kids learn how they think, even how they feel. I couldn't agree more. And parents can make a real difference. Just by doing more spatial stuff with them every day, being aware, paying attention, and getting creative. Exactly. So to all the parents out there, I have a question for you. What's one small thing you can try this week to help your kid with spatial activities? Maybe building a fort, playing a new board game, or even just using more spatial words when you talk to them. Every little bit helps. Right. And the most important thing is to have fun and turn learning into an adventure. When kids are having fun, their brains are ready to learn and grow. And who knows? Maybe we'll see a generation of kids with brains as amazing as those London taxi drivers. Now that's something to think about. For all our listeners, understanding spatial reasoning can really help your child. We hope this deep dive gave you some ideas to get started today.